Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. I wanted to come out today and share something with you all. Uh, it's more or less just a, a dream I was given and what I feel like the Holy Spirit showed me, it actually aligns with a timeline, a Wormwood Apophis prophecy timeline that Tom Horn was given. And I don't know if you're familiar with Tom Horn or his book on Wormwood, the Apophis Prophecy, or his DVD. But Tom Horn put out a DVD and a book probably a couple years ago, and he was sharing a vision he had been given about Apophis, about when this hits the earth. It's There's a prophecy in Revelation 8 about a big meteor called Wormwood. And so he was shown this in a vision, and when he woke from the vision, uh, he believes it was an angel that told him Apophis, spoke the word Apophis, and he looked it up. NASA has a date for the arrival of this rock. And based on that date, uh, he believes that there may be a time pointing to when the tribulation will begin because scholars, many biblical scholars, place the Wormwood event at the midpoint of the tribulation. All right, so I'm going to play a very brief clip from that DVD where Tom Horn and Derek Gilbert are on the Skywatch TV talking about this. Evangelical dispensationalists and some Catholic prophecy believers might find the timing of the Apophis Wormwood impact date, April 13, 2029, to be ominous regarding a possible rapture of the church as soon to occur. During that Skywatch program, however, as I was making the case that depending on one's particular position, the asteroid's impact date, as first set by NASA, could place the last possible timing of a pre-tribulation rapture as happening around or before October 13, 2025. Prophecy scholars say that Wormwood will fall to the earth in the middle of the seven-year Great Tribulation period. Therefore, pre-tribulation rapture believers would place the rapturous catching away of the saints 3.5 years before that time. You mentioned three and a half years uh, Backing up, if we go and take the, the, uh, uh, the this impact as the midpoint of the seven-year period, if you back up three and a half years from that, you wind up in the fall of 2025. And I just want to point out, not date setting, just something to consider as a bit of information, that the Feast of Tabernacles falls between October 7th and 13th of 2025. Okay, so you can see what Tom was shown. I encourage you to get that DVD, the book, whatever, read it, watch the DVD. Tom is, I believe, a very credible prophetic voice. I believe the Lord in his after-death experience in his 20s showed him a lot of things concerning end times. And Tom just has an understanding of these things that I believe is supernatural from the Lord. And I wouldn't even share this dream except that it aligned with what Tom Horn was, was shown concerning Wormwood Apophis. So... I had a dream a couple weeks ago, and in the dream, I was in a restaurant. A friend's parents owned the restaurant. It was going to be open for another 15 minutes. They were getting ready to close, and they needed help. And I told my friend's mom that I would help, and she said, okay, I will pay you $9 to work the last 15 minutes. And I said, okay, I will bust tables. So I went to the kitchen to find a serving tray. But the woman in the kitchen seemed unfamiliar with that. She was trying to hand me a dinner plate. And I was saying, no, I need a serving tray. Anyway, when I woke up from the dream, uh, I began to get the understanding of the dream that the number nine is evangelism, judgment, that the work I'm going to be doing for these last 15 minutes is to share with people the coming judgments, warn them uh, in an evangelical way, maybe out on YouTube or other ways. And the woman in the kitchen who wasn't familiar with the serving tray, I thought that was the Lord showing me how... Uh, you know how Jesus said that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Like there's a lot of people who just don't have an understanding of, of what it means to serve the Lord. 
And I feel like that's something we all need to work on getting to that place where we are ready for service. And uh, that's what we're focused on is how we can be useful instruments to, to the Father in his kingdom right now in these final moments. Rhonda Empson, my friend, she had had a dream similar to that with a 15 minute timeline. And she was being shown that her son would be in the last 15 minutes of the game, which without going into any detail, uh, it seems her son is right now at that place where he's ready to begin that last 15 minutes. And that is February of 2023 right now. And so I wasn't sure if the 15 minutes we were being shown was just to say, hey, we're very close, just keep watching. Uh, so we, I kind of left it at that, but then I was doing my devotions. And as I'm doing my devotions, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit just start stirring some things up in my spirit. And I begin to remember John Paul Jackson. Now, uh, I was supernaturally connected to John Paul Jackson's ministry and learned from him many things. I never met him, but I learned from his teachings. The, the Holy Spirit began to remind me that when John Paul Jackson passed away, uh, I immediately had the sense in my spirit that his death symbolized the end of the 11th hour and the beginning of the midnight hour. And if you haven't ever heard his story about how the angel appeared to his mom before he was even conceived to let her know uh, what John Paul's ministry would be, I'm gonna play a very brief uh, clip of, a, of an interview with John Paul where he talks about this. You know, uh, usually women find out from their doctor about their pregnancy, but with your mother it was different, wasn't it? For my mother it was different. My mother had an angel tell her that I was going to be, that she was going to conceive me. She had just had a late-term miscarriage, and with that miscarriage, she was grieving over the loss of that child. Mm -hmm. An angel came to my mother and said that uh, for her to grieve no longer, that she was going to have a child that did be a boy, that she was to call his name John Paul, and he would have an 11th hour ministry. He would tell things that were not as if they were and they would come to pass. Mm -hmm. And even her pregnancy, the angel said, would be a sign of that 11th hour ministry. So you were in your mother's womb for 11 months? 11 months, yes. She went to the doctor, I'm sorry, she went to the hospital on the day that I was due to be born, mm -hmm. May 30th, 1950. Yeah. And the labor process stopped Mm -hmm. And they thought they would see her in a couple of days. Instead, they saw her in a couple of months when the labor began again. That's incredible. It was, that's what my mom thought. <laughs> okay, so you can see that John Paul's birth was very prophetically significant, a sign even. And when he passed away, I just had a knowing that his death was important, but I didn't realize that it was a sign. And now I believe his death was actually a prophetic sign. A prophetic sign of what? Well, again, I believe when he passed, it marked the, the end of the 11th hour ministry and the beginning of the midnight hour. And then I'm reminded of the blood moon tetrad, which we all knew the 2014-15 tetrad was very symbolic. There was It was a sign. But uh, what I didn't realize is that John Paul Jackson passed away on February 18th, 2015 smack dab in the center of this blood moon tetrad all right so the, to me that indicates that 2014 marked the end of the 11th hour and going into 2015 marked the beginning of the midnight hour and so again i'm not saying setting any dates i'm just saying this to me indicates a, t a potential timeline so what i did is all right, now that I know we have 15 minutes left, then what we have completed would be three quarters of the midnight hour. All right, so what I did is did some just simple calculations from 2000, February of 2015 to February 2023 is eight years. And so eight years is 96 months and divided it by three, what we've already completed of the midnight hour to get this each what what each 15 minute segment would um, equate to which is 32 months or two years and eight months and astoundingly if you add two years and eight months to february 2023 it brings you to october 2025 uh, which is again the same timeline for the wormwood apophis prophecy which i just thought was interesting and i 
I wanted to share this with you, not to discourage you to watch for the next two years or not even to say that it's definitely going to happen then, but to encourage you that we know that the church is not appointed to God's wrath. We know he is going to take us out of here before the tribulation, but we don't know how much we're going to see before then. And things are probably going to be getting difficult. And the church really needs to pull together relationally with one another, with, with our Heavenly Father, with the Lord Jesus, and, and learn to, to serve one another and to be there for one another uh, while we're here. We need to be useful instruments. We need to occupy, okay? And so I hope this message encourages you. I hope you'll take this to the Lord in prayer, ask him for any confirmations. Uh, but as always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.